This meeting is being recorded. So we're here tonight because the select board revised the ordinance which regulates parking. The, or, the effective change made early this year after public hearing back in December decreased the parking opportunity on Main Street from Foundry up toward the vicinity of Prospect Street at the recommendation of the Highway Safety Committee. Due to public feedback after that change, the select board requested that the Highway Safety Committee revisit the change in the no parking ordinance, the parking, the ordinance that regulates parking. The Highway Safety Committee made a recommendation to the select board that additional parking would be possible at specific addresses. The area between one particular address down to Foundry would remain no parking because of visibility around coming out of in and out of Foundry. Um, but there, are, and then up toward um, Locust Street would also remain a non-parking area because of visibility issues coming down the hill at the bend of the road um, on Main Street. That was the rationale of the Highway Safety Committee at the time, and I would invite Highway Safety Committee members, um, if there are any besides the chief and the road agent, if they wanted to sit up here and give other people room. So, um, so the change before us is to allow, um, would allow um, parking where parking is not currently allowed in front of a few specific addresses along Main Street, between Locust Street on Foundry Street. Those of you who are affected by that change, I believe, are all, are mostly present tonight. So you're aware of the specific addresses. Uh, I don't recall them offhand. But I think we can, I think we can start with that. John, John or um, George, do you want to have a comment on this? Um, Caroline said it very well. Okay. Uh, I know two of the addresses where parking would be allowed would be Mr. Hill and the Smalls. And there is a third one in there, but I, but it's in the middle of uh, the Smalls and Mr. Hill. And it's right on the straightaway. And one of the things that we made a recommendation to change was it would be small compact cars that would have to stay off the road and off the sidewalk. If that car doesn't fit by those standards, then it won't be able to park there. So the residences that are being considered to be permitted are 619, 621, 629, and 631. talked about planning 
to allow parking in front of those two lots. Uh, the current proposal will now take away the parking, which the Deshaneless have enjoyed longer than my 32 years here, um, regardless of the fact that they already have crushed gravel. I'd like the board to consider keeping the ordinance as it was prior to December of 2020. In the 32 years I've been here, there has not been a safety issue caused by cars parking anywhere along this stretch. Please consider taking George's advice and putting crushed gravel in front of the four duplexes, so not just the, the smalls, but the four houses after that, which is, which is the, the one um, after the smalls, my house, which is 65, and then the next two. Um, so, you know, and that will allow all of our families to park in front of our homes. My youngest is 23, 21, she's still at home. We have three cars, one's mine, one's my wife's, and one's my daughter's. I can fit three cars in to end in our driveway, but the only way I currently have found to get the car furthest in is to move the one furthest back across the street, walk back across the street, move the second car across the street, walk back across the street, move the third car across the street, and then drive one of the first two cars back in, cross the street, drive the other car back in, cross the street, and then I can leave. There's four trips across the street. Having spots out front greatly reduces our risk. If my neighbors do not have access to the spots out front, they're either going to park further down in front of other homes, something that goes against the neighborly respect we've shown one another. Or they'll have to park on Locust Street where parking is allowed, but they'll need to continue making multiple trips across the street. It's far from an ideal situation. While some of the families today may have only one car, it's not typical. Every one of these homes will eventually have a need for parking out front. The other duplexes have shorter driveways than we do. Some can only fit two cars in the driveway. I don't believe any member of this board ran for office on a platform of micromanagement and bigger government. If micromanagement is now your intention, please use the same line of sight, parking space measurement rules consistently throughout the town. The street corners have any park, no parking signs, but along this whole stretch from Foundry to Locust, the only houses that have no parking, the gross no parking signs, are in front of the duplexes, the four duplexes. That should be evidence enough that the duplexes were the targets, in my opinion, and I think that's unconscionable. The duplexes sit on lots that are about two tenths of an acre. That's about 4,500 square feet of space per family. I'm not asking for special perks because of the small lots. I'm asking that you not take something away that we've had the right to use and enjoy throughout the entire history of the town. A right we all had when we made the decision to make these our homes. We're willing to pay our share, but it's not tolerable to live in a town where a few families are asked to, sac to endure such a sacrifice, a sacrifice that no one else in town is expected to pay. What I am asking of the select board tonight is that you try to understand all the facts in this situation. Take a walk with us, do the homework, take the measurements, discuss this with us out loud and in public. When Wentworth Greenhouse has their busy times, like the farmer's market, people park on the side of Rollins Road. The chief indicated to me that they need to be able to get their cars outside the white line to be legally parked. Not off the road, but outside the white line. Rollins Road at Wentworth Greenhouse is a much sharper curve than we have here on Main Street. The road here is just as wide, and I believe it's wider than it is there. This is a 30 mile an hour zone, Rollins Road is 35 miles an hour. Why would you apply a stricter rule for families on Main Street than you do for folks visiting the farmer's market? I hope that you do not govern us with a different set of rules on Main Street than on any other street in this town. The police SUVs are six feet wide, the chief measured it. I would not consider the police SUVs to be subcompact, but they will absolutely fit in front of all the duplexes. No tires touching the asphalt, room to spare. You can see for yourself. Please return the Main Street Parking Ordinance to what it was prior to this targeted proposal. Please apply the rules fairly and equally. If you go by address by address here, then you have to go all the way and go address by address throughout the entire town applying the same logic. The police department has always had the authority to take their car for parking on the sidewalk, blocking the lane of travel, impeding emergency vehicles, parking beyond the two lock power limit downtown, or creating any other safety issue. Let's enforce the laws you already have on the books. This additional no parking zone is not necessary. All the reasons behind this proposal, line of sight, if truly an issue, are already enforceable in the original wording of Ordinance 7501 or in New Hampshire State Motor Vehicle Law, RSA Title 21, Chapter 265. 
It will be your signatures at the bottom of the ordinance for all to see. The chief's not going to sign it. The town administrator is not going to sign it. The other members of the safety committee is not going to sign it. If you proceed with this ban and rubber stamp this proposal again without thought or discussion, you'll be throwing away the checks and balances that are vital to your role in government. You are the elected officials. You are the legislatures. Thank you for serving this town. You have no idea how much I appreciate all that you sacrifice for this town. Please stay true to the original intentions of this ordinance and the protections they ensure, which is safety, our safety. I beg you to do the right thing. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dave. You're welcome. Um, is anybody any other anything you'd like to comment? Could I just ask you? Absolutely. Would you like me to put this in? That's very thank you. Yes, sir. Um, Michelle Small, 631 Main Street. I, I think Dave said everything except that I just want to um, agree with him that I would hope we go back to where we were versus a hybrid. Um, my concern is, you know, I've been, we've been on Main Street since, what, 95? Um, and I agree, part of the, the reason we were okay with buying a Main Street house we were on the other side of the tracks for 10 years and knew we could park in front of the house if we needed to. Um, I think the change was not done for all the same reasons it's now being justified. There have, no, there have been no safety issues. One accident, my daughter backing out that I know of um, without looking, which had nothing to do with anybody parking and her being 18. Um, the, one of the discussions was to beautify Main Street. I'm in the Garden Club. We've planted trees, as you know, to try to do that. We're now parking in front of the trees that we've planted. And quite frankly, not to point out any properties, but there are other issues other than cars parking on the side of the road if we want to talk about beautification. You know, front lawns that are never mowed, trees that are growing over houses. Um, that, to me, when I drive into Roundsford, is what I see as not tidy or well kept. Um, the cars on the other side of the road actually, to me, look worse than if you have a car parked in front of your house. As David said, we've had respect for each other on that street. We don't park in front of other people's houses. You have your one little spot. It's an unspoken rule um, that everyone has followed. I feel I'm grateful that I'm in the middle, but I don't feel right that the Deshanos who have been there since his grandmother was born in the house, um, you know, can't park in front of their house all of a sudden because of six inches of hard pack. So that makes me uncomfortable as well, although, you know, obviously being able to park is a nice thing, but I, I don't feel comfortable taking away something that people have had for years and years and giving it back to only a few with a justification of a line of sight. Um, David's Wentworth observation is very true, and there's other instances where that occurs, and, and that's not to take away from Wentworth at all. I think what they do is great. It brings people into Rollinsburg. But I also think that if we had a safety issue, I'd be the first one in line to say, let's do something. But I just don't, I don't see it. Thank you. Thank you. Can you hear me? Can I speak to uh, the greenhouse being brought into this? So there is a farmer's market during the winter. And uh, last year during COVID, it was much slower than usual. But in the past, it's a controlled environment. Um, Brian Wentworth has been amazing to work with. He hires two officers to be out there. So we cone off the curves. No one's actually parking on those. It's an controlled environment where we monitor the situation. There's signage all the way down by the Dion's house. There's signage down on the other side that say police ahead. Um, we control the parking situation. We stop traffic so everyone crosses safely. So you really can't compare that detail, which is a controlled detail for four hours on a Saturday, versus normal parking. So I just want that to be heard, that it's a controlled environment, and there's not everyone parking on curves because we cone it off with no parking signs. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Okay. I'll get both points on. Um, so I, I want to ask what the original reasoning was for putting up the signs. Was it a safety issue originally? I, I would just say that the signs came as a result of the change of the ordinance. So maybe the better question is what prompted the ch first change in the ordinance? And I don't know if a... That was before my time. It was I, I do know that the green grass was mentioned. Um, I, I was not, I'm not on the Highway Safety Committee, so I can't speak to that. The, the first time I learned about the signs was when George asked me to meet them out there and they were put up. That's how I learned. Okay. Is there anybody from the original Highway Safety Committee uh, who was a decision maker in that process here? Jody Carnes, 28 Highland Ave. I wasn't on the Highway Safety Committee. I was a select board member. I remember multiple times other select board members wanted that area clean because it didn't look nice. And he wanted it removed. He wanted the cars removed. And it was over and over and over again. So if you go back to the meeting minutes and watch the videos, you'll hear it, but nothing was ever done about it. Uh, Mike Gibbons, 514 Locust Street. I don't know about the whole controversy. I've read certain things online about it. However, I'm a bit concerned about the rest of the town. We've had people on our street park on the street, and I guess that's allowed except during winter. It depends what side of the street they're on and where on Locust you are. There are some okay. lots where you can't park. Because we've had neighbor issues where we just asked the neighbor. Like if we're backing out of our drive and the neighbor has parked on the opposite side too close, it's very easy to just back out and almost hit him. And he parks on his lawn, he and his wife, and it's all worked out. We have several neighbors who have had to increase or give up their front lawn as their kids become older and park on or pave it in. My next door neighbor has paved an extra spot um, because we, our driveways are right next to each other. I can understand the issues on Main Street. I just wonder what happens because I've seen on the other end of Locust Street people just taking over the side of the street and there's been dirt put down on one place. I don't know how the um, tar was put in, but there are people using the space that's off the side of the road as parking spots. And I'm not supportive of that. At least I don't live on Main Street, but I wonder how it impacts if everybody else decides they want to park on the street. How it impacts the rest of the town. And I don't know that, I'm just bringing it up as somebody who's dealt with it um, on our street. And I don't want to be in a position where, you know, there are certain people who are given permission and certain people are not. Or I understand one is grandfathered in, I don't know what that means. But, you know, my belief in town, it's time to get rid of the grandfather things. Not particularly this issue, but other things that I keep hearing over the time I've lived here, well, they've been grandfathered in. It impacts everybody. So I just ask the board to be wary of what's going on in the rest of the town. I don't know if people can park there in the winter. Or were, they, were you guys able to park there in the winter before you had to get yeah. out? Yeah. After, if the parking ban was in effect, they weren't allowed to. If it wasn't, you do, could, but you had to be off the street by midnight. But by midnight, yep. If there's no snow. <laughs> Which <laughs> only happens like if once there's in no, a no snow. Got it. <laughs> so, I'm Joe Riker. I just bought 629 Main Street. I just want a small comment. Um, if this started as a beautify Main Street, you know, especially for keeping the grass green, that would never have been accomplished by preventing parking. Because every, and this, this could be a result of people not talking to the residents, but every day the UPS driver drives and parks, or not every day, every few days, parks straight in front of my house. They literally see the tire tracks mm -hmm. in brown. So there's no way that preventing parking is going to save the grass. My my grass is free range for the UPS driver. So small comment. But if that if it started as that and then it's going to snowball from there, I just want to make that comment. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Oh, I 
question is. Are there any is, comments from anybody online? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say <laughs> second. I'm Mark Deshano, 637 Main Street. Uh, that house has been in my family since the 50s, so I've been in town for a long time. Um, as everyone has stated, um, never been an issue, accidents in front of our houses. Uh, George, next to me, right on the corner of uh, Foundry Street, there's never been parking there because that is a safety issue. It is line of sight, you cannot see. Uh, there's always been a sign for no parking at the corner of my driveway. I have a fence and there was an arrow pointing this way. <laughs> One day I went outside and there's another sign. And then I see all these signs up the street. And I was like, what is going on? So I never heard about it. And then I found out why there's an issue and why there's a change. Uh, I agree with people as far as wanting to beautify the town. Uh, the way it's being done right now, I don't see that happening. Um, cars on one side of the street, coming down, coming up. I mean, if people, usually people park the same way. Everyone's facing this way if they're coming down Main Street. No problem. Even now, on the other side, there are cars that park this way. So, <laughs> I didn't think you're supposed to be able to do that, but that doesn't look good either. So, um, if I lose the parking, well, that's just, I guess, the way things are, but um, I've been able to park there ever since I've owned the house and my family's been there. So. so just my last comment as a member of the Highland Safety Committee, um, I feel like if there was never a valid reason um, for removing um, the parking rights there, that it's probably a mistake on the part of the Highway Safety Committee to move it forward. I'd like to comment on it as well. So, Kevin Gaines, 589 Main. Um, I'm going to use the board because I'm kind of a visual person and I'm probably going to be pretty unpopular because I believe I support the other opinion. Um, but, you know, opinions come to a lot of things. And uh, my mom always said opinions are like moms. You know, we all, at some point, we all had one, but they're not always right. Um, and, uh, <laughs> You know, opinion that can't be supported is really just a personal opinion, so um, I'm just going to talk about a few things. I did in the prior meeting with the safety board discuss a few, talk, few topics that I thought were valid, but I felt they were kind of dismissed quickly, so I'm going to go over them quickly as well. I won't, I won't be very long people at all. Um, once again, I'm, I'm speaking out. I have no bias. You can't buy from my house because it's a fire hydrant. Um, I live on the very end of this zone. Um, and like I said, I have no bias. It doesn't matter if you change it or not to me. It really doesn't. Um, I'm just, I, I feel like I'm doing the right thing. And um, I'm really not here to talk about grass. Um, first of all, you'll uh, ask to use my penmanship. I broke the same twice. I still ride, but you know, just so you know. I'm not here to talk about grass. Um, I mean, you've all, you've all seen, you all know where people park. You've all seen where the regular parking is. You've all seen the damage. You've all seen something sidewalk. I think the person who actually finished this is, is actually in this room. So you've all seen it. Um, I'm not really here to talk about crossing the road, um, you know, because uh, we still have to do it because we're not talking the whole street. Um, we still have to do it. And I think that, uh, I mean, that's something that we've learned since children, since walking, starting with parents, starting with teachers, our whole lives we do it. Um, I think the only thing that probably make it more dangerous is if there's cars parked on the house side of the road where people are not coming out and getting less visi visibility to the pass it to the uh, drivers. So um, we're still going to have to do that. Um, once again, penmanship. And um, I'm really not here to talk about how tight that parking space is or how narrow that is. Um, I think that the proposal references the fact that we're talking about doing only um, compact cars, which should also be a sign that this is not a regular standard parking space where you can pull up in a big old truck. Um, and, if, you know, I've heard also about the hardship this has been caused to people. Um, hardship, once again, penmanship. 
Um, and I mean, I just don't see it. I gotta, I gotta you know, I, I call things as I see them. You know, if something walks like a duck, cracks like a duck, tastes great, go into blades, and the glass real low, I'm gonna call it a duck. Um, but I, you know, I just don't see it. Um, we, we heard talk tonight about the houses. Um, I think Mr. Hill said he has parking for six cars in front of his house, and I think some of the others probably have parking for you know four or five. But um, realistically, I, I, I think we're talking more about a convenience. of three houses, um, and um, we're not talking about taking away the primary parking, we're talking about a, a fifth, sixth, seventh, or eighth parking spot, and not that they've lost this because they're still across the street. We're just talking about having to take ten extra strips to cross the street, um, which like I said, we still have to cross the street because the rest of the parking is already there, obviously there. Um, so, and I'm not so concerned about the drivers in these cars because, you know, driver looks in his mirror, obviously we're all good drivers, we're very careful and safe. I'm, I'm more concerned about little Billy, okay? Billy is sitting behind the driver, okay? Um, Billy don't have no mirrors. Um, Billy's too short to see over the back seat. And Billy is in an awful big hurry because he's been homeless since McDonald's where he supersized his Mountain Dew. So, that's a concern, you know, kid popping out of the back seat real quick on the side of the street. So I'm going to take it one step further and talk about scientific facts tonight, and I'm sure I'm going to be, be butcher this. Okay? We're here tonight to talk about safety, okay? Um, I'm guessing everybody in this room realizes there's two main components of safety, and that is speed and that is visibility. Visibility. Um, speed affects braking distance. And visibility expects, uh, affects reaction time. Um, yes, you excuse my name, but you like, you know, dropped as a kid. So, um, And also, I mean, speed also affects reaction time. Visibility also affects braking distance. But all of these are very key facts when you're talking car versus pedestrian traffic. So let's look at that. Let's break that down. Um, let's look at coming from Locust to Foundry. Just the stretch that we are looking at tonight. All right. Coming from Locust, all right. You're coming in this way. You just came through Stockdale. So you got about a half mile stretch, you know, down by Stockdale. And then, yeah, you got a little rise. Um, no, you actually, you've got a gentle curve right in front of um, Stockdale. And then you've got a little rise, and you've got a long, gradual hill coming down, and now you're at Locust. Okay, this is coming from out of town. So let's look at coming from downtown, okay? Downtown, you got a 90 degree corner right down on Main, uh, Front Street and Main Street. Um, then you have a real sharp uphill, okay, coming up, and then you got about a three block distance, three blocks, okay. So let's break this down a little more. Um, when you're driving by here, you're you're seeing houses set way back from the road with lawns. Beyond that, you've got uh, you got woods, and you got fields. In these three blocks, you've got a town hall, you've got a police department, you've got a post office. You've got a garage, you've got a store, you've got a factory in those three blocks. All right? Um, also, coming into town, this is a 35 out here. Turns to a 30 at the top of the hill, okay? This is a 15 down here. 15 turns to a 30 at the top of the hill. Just so you know, for, for reference. Um, so we're going to talk about some scientific facts here. Okay, we're going to talk about momentum. And like I said, um, that's just using my spelling. Okay, like school was a long time ago, but I did get a blue star and like hooked on phonics. So, um, so we're talking about momentum. Momentum is a, pro is, a, is a property that an object gains through its mass, velocity, and duration, okay? 
I'm saying in every scenario, coming down this half mile versus this three blocks, this is going to be the vehicle traveling faster due to momentum. Now we're talking about centrifugal force, another funky scientific fact. Centrifugal force is the outward curve, the outward force of a vehicle, of anything as it goes around a curve. Um, generally, you can compensate the vehicle for, for a centrifugal force based on lower center of gravity of the vehicle, tire compound, but most of the time, the way people adjust for a centrifugal force around a curve is they lower the speed. Okay? That's what we do, because you know, we're not all driving McLaren F1s. Um, so we lower speed. Going around a corner. The more drastic the corner, the more we're slowing down. I'm thinking a 90 degree corner versus a gentle curb, this is always going to be the faster one over this. Um, then we got a little phenomenon called gravity down an incline. Okay? It's a real simple one. Um, once you remove friction, like a vehicle pretty much free rolls, take a block of ice, put it on a tilted board. Okay? With removing the friction because it's ice. I think it's going to slide downhill. I've never seen one slide uphill. Okay? Um, that's just a, a, a standard. I, I'm not going to get off on to go into detail about that, but we're going to talk about ice on a board. In which case, going back to our drawing, I'm talking that coming down a long sloping hill, this is going to be the faster curve than this one. But wait, there's more. There's also something called centripetal. Centripetal force. Now, I don't expect a lot of people know about this. Uh, if you're a race car driver or a race motorcycle, you know about this. this. Is the fact that if a vehicle can, if, if an object can overcome centrifugal force going around a curve, it will pick up speed. Race car drivers call it slingshot. If you've ever dropped a coin in a funnel at Walmart, it goes faster and faster. The coin lays down, so it overcomes centrifugal force. You, you reduce the, the radius, um, it goes even faster. So, um, excuse me, sir. Are you going to get to a point? I am, sir. Please. I am, sir. Yes, thank you. Um, so I'm saying that's an acceleration. And I'm also talking about the fact that um, human input. Um, this driver here, as he heads into this step stretch, he only has to lift his foot to slow down. This driver has to lift his foot, move his foot, and step on the brake. Three times the three times the effort. All right. So we'll talk about speed next, visibility next. Um, you guys have already talked about the fact that the police, the, 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 the cyber safety committee understands that visibility is a key thing on the curve. You know, line of sight is an important thing. Line of sight is a big thing. Line of sight described as clear line of sight without an obstacle. Line of sight, obstacle. Line of sight around a curve. Same thing. Um, what I'm saying is that the street itself has a curve to it. Okay? And I've looked at it with a sidewalk, and they're right, they don't want to park on the downside of the curve because it affects visibility. But if you drive by here, and I would welcome you to do it tonight, the house is right at the very corner, they have trees, bushes, and a fence in the middle of it. So there is, there is some instruction going down there. I drove myself several times, and the only place I thought saw visibility was in front of the very last house. I had it for a split second that would then disappear once it was behind these trees and if there was cars parked there. Okay? Going back to um, Main Street, simple diagram. Okay, you got the street. You got the sidewalk. You got houses. Your houses, okay, and you have the sidewalk. Okay, let's say each one has a driveway. Okay, what I'm saying to you is is that if you park cars right here and you're coming here. The visibility is limited as the driver from his viewpoint to this. Okay? If you've got a kid riding a bike, let's say you've got a pedestrian here, 
And let's say you got a kid riding a bike right here. Okay? That kid, seeing this pedestrian, and let's even go one step further. Let's say that there's an obstacle in this front yard, whether it's a tree or an elevated front lawn, you know, eight-inch front lawn around the whole front that, you know, like we see on Main Street that you can't get around. This kid is going to go like this, okay? Let's say we have a car in the driveway, okay? Let's say we have a car in the driveway backing up, okay? Once again, anything beyond this point is invisible to this driver. Anything beyond these points, this none of these people can see. So once again, you got a person backing up. That could obviously be, a, be an issue. Um, let's say that um, you know, let's say that you got a, someone riding a bike on the sidewalk here, and a door pops right open, and he can't go around this way. This driver, this this pedestrian's got to go that way. All I'm saying is that um, you know. Without question, you cannot say that there's not a line of sight problem here with the fact that these two cars will block this side and this side. I can tell you right now that 100% of the cars backing out on Main Street happen on this side of the house. Zero come over from over here. We've heard of incident of that, incidents of that right before. I'm going to say that, you know, or even, even take it one step further, take the kid walk playing with a ball down the street, down the sidewalk. You know, he's another one that could pop up the driveway just as quick. Okay, so I would say that of kids playing in driveways on Main Street, 100% of them are on this side of the street, 0% of them is on this side of the street. Um, and even bicyclists, I'll say, I'll be generous, say 95% of the bicycles are ridden on this side of the street, skateboards, bicycles, and quite honestly, I don't want them on this side of the street, and I can't imagine the police want them to be on the side of the road, that's even less safe, but they are on the sidewalk, and once again, this, this bicyclist sees a, an obstacle, can't go around, He's going to go this way. Oh, that could end pretty badly. Um, can, can I ask a question? Yes. Um, what is your um, <coughs> expertise in this matter? None. Okay. None. So without a traffic study, mm -hmm. um, and having no incidents in how many years, this is all theory. You know, it, it's, 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 it's ironic. I bet if 25 years ago someone spoke up and said, you know, we should probably increase security at airports so that terrorists don't steal airplanes and crash into skyscrapers, um, they would have probably thought he was a fool. You know, that's, that's my point, is that this could happen. This could absolutely happen. I, 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 you know, if you want to sit there and say you can't, we've already heard about a car accident back on the driveway. I don't care what you do either way. That's, that's my point. I'm just saying that, you know, if there is an accident here, you know, and little Billy gets injured, who's really at fault? This driver could be doing the speed. This is a kid playing the street. The real fault is the person who allowed that car in there. That's just how, how I kind of look at it. Um, and if I'm wrong, you know what? I'm happy. I'll live with that forever. But if there's a chance I can save a kid, you know, I'm going to stand up and talk. You yeah, know? I, I understand. Um, and, you know, there's another issue. You know, we, we talked about, um, you know, it's pie in the sky that this may look like the perfect storm. But it's really not. Y'all don't live on the street. Okay? Do you? But, but, Do it, but, but the point is, is the residents need to take responsibility for the people in their households. And I understand that. It's not the town's responsibility. It's it the isn't. residents. It isn't. It isn't. But accidents happen. We've already heard one about a, 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 an incident back on a driveway. It had nothing to do with the parked car. <laughs> nothing. But I'm just saying. To do with parked car. I understand. I understand. I just feel like I wouldn't speak my, if I wasn't speaking my mind. I guess to back up, you know, I mean, there's another issue here that. There's a sewer hole in front of 629. You know, I mean, if a vehicle leaked oil into the septic, we would all have big problems. We would all have big problems. Try to deny that, you can't. Okay. Well, I agree. That was something that was brought up. That's important. Okay. Um, but here's the, here's the other thing is that, um, you know, I think I've done a little bit to show the reasoning behind why I think this is the better, safe, you know, leaving where it is, the safer side as far as visibility and speed. And, you know, we're just, we're just, um, Residents, we can have opinions. Okay, y'all ain't. You are elected officials and appointed officials, so right. you need to be able to justify your decision making. Okay, right. and I could, I could also have the same theory across the street that Absolutely. little Johnny was at, at McDonald's and he had a big uh, Mountain Dew, and someone parked across the street, and little Johnny ran across the street so fast because they go to the bathroom that he didn't look. Yeah. It's the same scenario. Absolutely. So, I mean, you can draw up. Absolutely. Just say that. So, I right. understand, no, I understand. And I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. But we gotta, we but I'm just saying, move. too, and, and I don't think I'm talking any longer than the other side was. Oh, yeah, well. You know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm finishing now, is that, you know, we can have our personal opinions as, um, you know, just regular people, but y'all are appointed, you know, so you have to be able to document and support 
and support your decision, okay? So if your decision is to switch, that's fine, but without some sort of supportive reason, it turns into sort of a personal agenda. And that's not a good look for elected officials. If anything, when I see being fiscally responsible with our money, um, I would think that if we got to dig this back up and replace gravel in here, that should fall on the onus of the, of the landowner. If they're the ones that are originally going to be benefiting from this, you know? I would just hate to think that, um, you know, your viewpoint is that the convenience of three houses to have a five, six, seven, eight, ten steps closer is more important than even the possibility. Because remember, 911 happened. No one thought that was going to happen. It happened. You know, that's what I'm saying there. Um, um, Mr. Haynes, we like we have other people who like to give some public yeah. input. Um, did you have something? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just actually closing right now. Actually, um, did you? Did, did you have something? We need to give other people the opportunity to speak. Please. Yeah. Um, I I wanted yeah, to comment right. that the justification that they have to make the change back to the old way is the comments of everyone else, if basically, which is all the people who've lived there for 30 years who have observed that there hasn't been a meaningful accident to represent that we need to remove parking. There hasn't been an accident in the 30 years that many of them have lived here that was caused by the parking. So that that is the justification documentation you guys need to turn it back to the old way. Also, with the knowledge that no parking related accidents have happened in 30 years. Is it possible that we are, there, there's a 0.00001% chance that an accident would happen? Mm -hmm. And by in introducing parking restrictions, we're making it safer, but it's already just as safe as it needs to be. It, sure, it's safer, but it's just, it's already so near zero that it's unnecessary. So I, I feel like some of what has been said up here is like sort of like fear mongering. It's like these things aren't realistically going to happen. There's no history to indicate that they're going to happen. It's just like what if there's a random child who gets hit by a car because of the parking? I don't know. I, I disagree with I disagree with a lot of what was just said. I do know that there was a kid that was run over on a stapler on Locust Street. That's an accident when that happens. That's an accident. Somebody was pulling out of a driveway and the, and the kid got ran over. That's an accident. There's not a, you know, nobody, nobody creates a new ordinance. This is, this is the view that I just like to show you from Locust Street when you're pulling out and then as you're coming down Main Street. So just to add that to the <clears throat> Michelle? I, I just want to reiterate that the original change was not done. We talked, I think you mentioned the personal agenda. We were talking, or we were not here, but others were talking about grass, which is a much more personal agenda than all of Main Street saying, wait a minute, we've been here parking for 50 years, what's going on? It's not a safety issue. I mean, you can say that about guns. You can say that about driving down to the store. I can get into an accident. Um, and again, if, if there were issues, I live there. I would want it to be changed. But there are no issues. And I feel like there was a personal agenda that was taken, ran with, changed for whatever reason. And you know, now we're all in here trying to explain why that shouldn't have happened. Um, and we're trying to justify it through a safety issue that didn't exist. And that's disappointing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, uh, thank you for letting me speak. Uh, I actually wasn't planning to speak this evening. Um, I'm actually seeing my son and father right now. So you may hear his voice as well. I don't think part of that. Um, excuse me, um, could you please state I, your name and address? Uh, yes, my name is Logan Hill. Uh, I live at 621 Main Street. Um, I, you know, I, guess I, I wasn't going to speak today, but you know, after hearing hear Mr. Ames, there was no personal stake in this thing. Uh, you know, such an honorable defense of young Billy, uh, complete with uh, education in the physical sciences, uh, you know, I felt compelled to do my civic contribution as well. 
Um, I, I would like to say that, you know, like, I believe it was Mr. Riker who said that um, it sounded like it bordered on fear mongering. I, you know, I think anytime you compare parking spaces to the September 11th terrorist attack, that, that does seem a little bit like fear mongering to me. Uh, that's all I have to say in response to Mr. Haynes. But I, I did send a, a, an email to the select board that, that I would like to read now as well for everybody present. Um, and, and that is that I would like to express my disappointment uh, in these proposed changes to the parking ordinance. Uh, I'm not disappointed because parking is being returned. I'm disappointed that this silly, silly parking ban on Main Street, which was enacted this past winter, is not being entirely reversed. Uh, the new changes represent an obscene level of bureaucratic micromanagement, and it's unnecessarily confusing legislation. We were initially told, uh, as, as many people have mentioned, that the original reason for this ban was so that grass would grow. Uh, we're now being told that this is a, a quote-unquote safety issue, which is, in my opinion, an obviously manufactured concern that was never originally considered. Uh, the town, uh, it appears to want to draw a line between the squeakies and wheels uh, in favor of and against this parking ban. Uh, and, and they have reverse engineered a safety, quote unquote, concern to reach the desired conclusion. Uh, this, this seems to me to be cowardly, deceptive, and, and a bit ludicrous. It, it does not seem coincidental that this parking ban uh, in this proposed ordinance change would end at the first person who complained against it. And it only includes those who have showed up to express opposition to the parking ban. But I suppose that could just be a coincidental result of these safety concerns. Uh, this, this proposed ordinance changing the wording and execution is it's confusing, it's overly complicated, it's asinine, and it's embarrassing as a resident of the affected area. Uh, why are we assessing parking on a house number by house number basis? And why are we going so far as to detail what type of vehicle is allowed to park there? Why are we only targeting and harassing a handful of houses that are all coincidentally regulated with this legislation? I believe it's unreasonable to expect the town to assess street parking in front of every individual address. And therefore, it's unreasonable to apply that style of assessment to one single block of Main Street. This is baselessly convoluted, and it will lead to an unavoidable confusion for residents and visitors. It will generate more wasted time for our police officers who will need to enforce this arbitrary ban, and it will lead to more negative police interaction with the community. We should be using our police resources wisely in ways that serve the community, rather than forcing the police to harass residents and visitors for foolish and fabricated offenses. This micromanagement is an embarrassing misuse of town resources, a transparent fabrication of imaginary safety concerns, and a pathetic display of bureaucratic cowardice. If a vehicle is impeding the flow of traffic, encroaching on a sidewalk, or otherwise obstructing vehicles or pedestrians, we already have the power to take and tow them under previously existing state and local laws. What you are proposing is to appease a very, very, very small minority of local complainers and to impose their will upon the vast majority of the residents. I would like my parking back, yes, and this proposed parking change would give me the ability to park in front of my house. However, what I'm urging this for the town to do is right and what is reasonable, and not to couch out to the whims of the few while dispossessing and harassing the many. Restore access to public property as it previously was in Sugarman. Please consider repealing the changes from this winter entirely. Return parking to Main Street as it existed for my entire life. Take down the grotesque, unesthetic no parking signs that are destroying our small town charm and restore sanity and rationality to the neighborhood. You are the legislators, not the police chief. This is your decision, and I strongly encourage you to make an honest assessment of what is right, what is fair, and what is reasonable. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Logan. Um, I'm going to let Allison speak. Um, Allison, you're going to be Oh, thank you, sir. It's having trouble unmuting. Um, Allison Cody, 25 South Street. I'm speaking because I had sent an email on behalf of the Rollinsford Water and Sewer District Commissioners to the Select Board in response to this issue. Um, it just recently came to our attention, to be honest, it, the parking um, restrictions hadn't been on our radar at all until someone recently brought it to our attention. Um, but we just wanted to add to say that I believe in one of the stretch, the stretch of road that's under um, discussion here, that there is a sewer manhole. And we just wanted to convey that we do not think it's good practice to be parking over sewer manholes um, in the event of an emergency, if that needed to be accessed and there was a car parked there and you couldn't get um, you know, to the homeowner, the vehicle owner, and so on and so forth. So we just wanted to put that 
and I don't know precisely which home it's in front of, you know, the address. I did walk that recently, but I don't recall exactly the address. But again, just wanted to um, make sure that that was also part of the consideration, um, just from the perspective of the sewer district. Thank you. Um, so that manhole is in front of my house, 629, and I just want to say I will respect that safety decision. It doesn't need to be an ordinance. I just will not park there. It, you, it can be on the honor system. No need to write it into law. I just won't park there. Are we talking about storm drain or a manhole cover? Yeah, which one is a sewer cover? It's a sewer cover. It's a sewer cover. Yeah, it's a sewer cover in front of his house, but is, are we talking about the storm drain that's further up? I think she's talking about the storm cover. Storm cover, yeah. You know you cut the catch in the uh, trailer. You know, yeah. I'm familiar with that chain. All right, sorry. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, well, I know that we're going to close the public hearing. Yeah, and then I'll have that. I appreciate all the comments, and I think me and Kim are going to definitely do some more. Are you about things for sure? I'm going to do that right now. Um, I don't want to make a comment, but I think as soon as next Monday night, we can probably make a decision. The next Senate board meeting? I think so. Mm -hmm. Who is that? I, I, I said um, we're going to meet again Monday. Uh, uh, we don't know. There is a meeting on Monday. Monday presentation. So it's just a regular meeting. We'll talk about it. I think we need to meet every Monday. We'll talk about that. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. So the public hearing is closed. Um, yeah. Open the select board meeting.